state security. Therefore, all foreign countries and your representatives, your embassies, your missions, uh, international organizations, aid agencies, I would like to assure you that we will not allow anybody to do anything against you. Your security is ensured. Our forces are there 24 hours around the clock to ensure your security. Undoubtedly, uh, we, want, we did not want to see any kind of chaos or inconvenience in Kabul. Um, our plan was to stop at the gates of Kabul after capturing all other provinces. Therefore, so that the transition process is completed smoothly without us entering Kabul, uh, so that we stop the troubles and harms or damages. But unfortunately, the previous government was so incompetent and as a result of their actions, uh, the, their security forces could not do anything to ensure security and we had to do something, we had to take the responsibility. Uh, so that was the reason. The abusers and the uh, rioters, uh, they wanted to abuse the name of the emirate, Islamic Emirate to enter houses or to uh, arrest the people or to steal. So we, then therefore, we instructed our forces to enter Kabul to ensure this, to stop all this and to ensure security. So we had to do this, to enter Kabul to stop those uh, criminals and abusers so that we, we ensure the safety and security of the people and the residents of Kabul. Therefore, um, the residents should be are assured that your security is, is guaranteed. In the same way, uh, when it comes to on the, the when it comes to the current circumstances, I would like to ensure I would like to assure the international community, including the United States, that nobody will be harmed in Afghanistan. I would like to assure our neighbors, regional countries, we are not going to allow our territory to be used against anybody, any country in the world. So the whole global community should be assured that we are committed to these pleasures, that you will not be harmed anyway from our soil. Uh, the international community, we would also like to request the international community so that we then recognize uh, international boundaries and interactions with, we should be treated accordingly. According to these frameworks, we do not want to have any, prob any problem with the international. We have to act on the basis of other and the principles of our religion, of our culture, and we have given a lot of sacrifices. Uh, we have the right to act on the basis of our religious principles and rules and regulations. This is the right of the Afghan. Um, other countries have also different, uh, they have got different rules, different policies, different Europeans have different uh, approaches and policies, the US has different, different rules and regulations, Arab countries in the same way, other countries in the same way. The Afghans also have the right to have their own rules and regulations and policies so that they are in the advantage and for the profit of the nation, of the people, so that they are in accordance with our Values. So nobody should be worried about uh, our norms and principles. The issue of women is very important. The Islamic Emirate is committed to the rights of women within the framework of Sharia. Our sisters, our women have the same uh, rights will be able to benefit from their rights. They can have a 
activities in different sectors and different areas on the basis of rules and regulations, educational, health, and other areas. They are going to be working with us, shoulder to shoulder with us. Um, the international community, if they have concerns, we would like to assure them that there's not going to be any discrimination against women, but of course within the frameworks uh, that we have. Our women are Muslim. They are, will also be happy to be living within our frameworks of Sharia. We hope that uh, as soon as the conflict is done away with in Afghanistan, we are going to build the infrastructures of the economy. For this, we are going to take uh, actions for economic activities. The interactions with the international community with other countries are going to continue. We are going to be working on our natural resources and our resources in order to revive our economy for our reconstruction, for our prosperity. Therefore, the Islamic Emirate is requesting the whole international community that God willing, we can very soon actually, very quickly can change the situation in the country economically. Every Afghan wants to improve his or her life. So the whole uh, community, the whole society will be active uh, in trade, in economics, and we are committed uh, to ensure security and after that to build our society, uh, to serve our nation. Uh, we are the servants of the nation for the benefit of the nation, both in this world and for the next world. Once again, I would like to assure the media, we are media within our cultural frameworks. Uh, private media can continue to be free and independent. They can continue their activities. We've got requests, uh, uh, some requests from the media. Well, one is that Islam is a very important value in our country. Nothing should be against Islamic values uh, when it comes to the activities of the media. Therefore, Islamic values should be taken into account when it comes to the activities of the media, when it comes to developing your programs. Therefore, in the, the media should be independent, should be impartial. Impartiality of the media is very important. They can, crit they can critique our work so that we can improve. Um, so you, young in the media, should also pay attention to the shortcomings so that we can serve the nation in a better way, and you should also work accordingly. The same way, it's very important that the Afghans are giving a lot of importance to their national values. A national unity, national consensus. The media should not work against this, against its national values, against national unity. Uh, when it comes to ethnic differences, religious differences, and hostilities, they should not be actually promoted uh, uh, by the media. They should work on the country for the unity of the nation. Um, to have peaceful, um, brotherly living together. For once, ag once again, I would like to express my gratitude to all of you for particip participating in our press conference. So the names are going to be read out. I'm here to serve you. We are going to have more press conferences. So today we have uh, maybe less time than the future. I've got, I just, just came from, from a trip. I just wanted to make sure you're not going to wait for me. So we'll have a lot of time to discuss in the future. The questions are going to be asked now. I'm going to answer all of the questions.
Unfortunately, I can't hear the other gentleman uh, at the podium. The first question from Al Jazeera. Everybody will have a chance to, to ask question. Al Jazeera. Charlotte Phyllis from Al Jazeera, I can't hear her. The question was about women's rights. The question is, what kind of guarantees can it provide for ensuring women's rights? As I said, as I mentioned earlier, when it comes to, we are going to allow women to work and study, we have got frameworks, of course. The women are going to be very active in the society, but within the frameworks of Islam. Whether it is in work or other activities, because women are a key part of society. And we are guaranteeing all their rights within the limits of Islam. The question was about interpreters and security for the interpreters that work for the Americans and also the contractors. Unfortunately, I cannot hear the questions by the media. I would like to assure you, I would like to assure all the compatriots, whether they were translators, whether they had military activities, or whether they were civilians, all of them have been present. Nobody is going to be treated with revenge. Those, the youth who have talents, who have grown up here, who are in this country, we don't want them to leave. We, these are our assets. We would like them to stay here. To stay. We would like to assure you that nobody is going to knock on their door to inspect them or to ask them or to interrogate them as to who, who they have been working for or interpreting for. So I would like to assure you that no harm is going to be, um, they're not going to, they're going to be safe. When it comes to contractors, I don't have any information about this, but it, it, has, it might have to do with the previous years. I do not have any full information about this. Mr. Mujahid says that we are assuring the safety of all those who have worked with the United States and Allied forces uh, as interpreters or any other field that they have worked with them. Uh, as for their talents and their skills, we do not want them to leave the country. We want them to serve their own homeland. As for the contractor that was perhaps uh, missing uh, and reported by the media, uh, we do not have any information about him at the moment. Uh, 
I assure you that in your homes, nobody is going to harm you, nobody is going to knock on your door, nobody is going to be interrogated or, or, or chased. Those, those who had knocked on people's doors to inspect their houses, they had been abusers, uh, they are going to be chased and investigated. So, Thousands of soldiers who had fought us for two years after the end of the occupation, all of them have been pardoned. Those who, those families who are at the airport waiting, they, if they come back to their homes, nobody is going to do anything to them. They're going to be safe. Nobody is going to inspect them. They're we give them confidence. Again, I can't hear the question. Uh, this is from Tulu News. So from the answer, we'll find out what the question has been. If you can ask us one question, I should remind you that we have pardoned everybody. This is for the benefit of stability and peace in Afghanistan. All factions who have fought us from A to Z are not going to be revenged. And God forbid, we haven't done anything against anybody. Uh, if during the war and conflict somebody has been harmed, then this is uh, one of the side effects of conflict for 20 years, uh, a huge occupying, occupying force was defeated, then uh, this, it was impossible for us to free the country to emancipate the country without uh, injuries, without arms, without being hurt. You know that people have even suicide, uh, like fittingly, if somebody that, uh, if somebody has done the result of these activities, these are of course understandable, they are specific of war, but I would like to assure you, guarantee that harm affected on the mission has been intentional, there have been the side effects of war, there have been technical problems, and other unfortunate effects uh, and incidents. Next question. <laughs> I'm 
You know that when the political situation changed in the city, thefts and robberies and crimes uh, started to emerge, that we had to take actions to stop them. Uh, a short period of time to do that, so we, we went to we to stop instability, so they had to be controlled. We had to come up with a sort of a, um, actions within different uh, regions of the city. So gradually, we, man, we will bring back complete normal instability. The Islamic image of Afghanistan will never abuse any assets. Uh, those, for example, some people are armed, they have to be disarmed.